Fascia Research Society invites ABMP podcast listeners to attend the 6th International Fascia Research Congress, September 10th through 14th, 2022 in Montreal. The event includes eight keynote speakers, over 60 parallel session talks and posters, seven full and eight half-day workshops, and a two-day fascia-focused dissection workshop. The lineup of keynote speakers and workshops is already available on the Fascia Research Society website, and the full Congress schedule will be out June 3rd. Register for the 6th International Fascia Research Congress today at fasciaresearchsociety.org. Easily run your business with free online scheduling, payment processing, and more from the new ABMP Pocket Suite Signature Edition. ABMP has partnered with Pocket Suite to bring members a free, easy to use phone app that lets you focus on what matters most your clients. Businesses on Pocket Suite see an average 30% increase in earnings, and you can get set up in 15 minutes by choosing from curated, preloaded settings or customizing the app for your practice. Features include online scheduling. HIPAA compliant intake forms and contracts, and payment processing, all included in the ABMP Signature Edition and all free to ABMP members. Go to abmp.com slash pocket suite to get started and spend more time focusing on what you love. Darren Buford. And I'm Kristen Coverly. And welcome to the ABMP podcast, a podcast where we speak with the massage and bodywork profession. Our guest today is Adrian Aston. Adrian has been practicing massage since 2001 and is co owner of Center for Self Care in Tucson, Arizona. She holds advanced certifications in neuromuscular therapy and prenatal massage, with her clients seeing her for nurturing and informed approaches to pain management. Adrienne is most proud of her work her company is doing to bring complementary therapies to those going through addiction recovery, and she is working on contributing to this area of massage therapy research. She has been deeply involved in education for the massage industry, holding various education positions since 2002, and as an NCB TMB approved provider for continuing education. She's developed ancillary materials for textbooks, widely used in massage therapy programs, and has trained all levels of practicing massage therapists and educators. She's been volunteering for the Massage Therapy Foundation since 2010 and has served as chair of the Community Service Grants Review Committee and on the Development Marketing Committee. Adrienne has also served as vice president for the Massage Therapy Foundation for just over a year, trustee for the past five years, and began her new position as president on June 1st, 2022. For more information, visit massagetherapyfoundation.org. Hello, Adrienne, and hello, Kristen. Hello. It's great to be here. I am super excited to be on this podcast. I really, really love what you guys are doing here at ABMP. This podcast is so rich with information and I feel really privileged to be on it. Well, we feel equally privileged that you are here with us today. And we're so excited to talk to you about everything about you, your practice and the Massage Therapy Foundation. Let's start with you. Tell us your story. You state on the website that massage is my art and anatomy and physiology, my muses. Tell us a little bit more about that. Why are anatomy and physiology so special to you? And how did you get into massage? How did this all start? My origin story. <laughs> so. All right. So let me let me start with the origin story first, and then I'll, I'll leak into the the um, anatomy and physiology as my muse. So I had a lot of roads that kind of pointed me in the direction of massage. But because it wasn't in my sphere growing up, I didn't get it. Right. So I had the this, this story that you hear from a lot of body workers, especially ones that have been practicing, you know, for, for a couple of decades is, oh, I like to give my friends massages and I like to rub their shoulders and they say, I'm really good at it. And that happened on a number of occasions. And, you know, you should go to school for that. You should go to school for this. And I said, you know, for for what to rub people's backs for a living? I just don't understand that. You know, it just it was so foreign to me. 
and I was working in a large advertising firm in Manhattan prior to my massage life. And I had, like, I kept wringing my hands a lot. I was noticing that it started in college. So, and I, I just didn't know. And I thought it was just this tick or habit that I had. Um, friends of mine were musicians. So I picked up playing the guitar, thinking that, you know, maybe, you know, using my hands in that way would, would be able to um, kind of quell that that itch, right? And um, it helped a little bit. I got promoted in the ad agency. And as I was getting promoted, it was just farther and farther from my life goals, right? You know, so it's really late, really at the time, it's probably shifted at this point, really late hours, really unhealthy habits, Um, and I had been on my own wellness journey, you know, in in a fitness realm. And I was just feeling really good. And I wanted to be in that space. I knew personal training and group fitness wasn't the right way to go, but there was definitely, there was a movement aspect that resonated with me. I don't know if I would have been able to articulate that, you know, 21 years ago, 22, however long it is. Um, So there was a, a, a moment, a project I was working on at the ad firm that was just four, all the way to four o'clock in the morning every day. And it was, it was just grueling. And it was like, hurry up, hurry up, I get a FedEx. Hurry up, I get to FedEx. Ah. I'm like, oh my God, for what? You know, and, and, and I just didn't understand how I was contributing to humanity in that moment. So I remember a, a colleague of mine at the time, I went up behind her and I just dug my thumbs into her traps and she just like put out the sigh of relief and I, I, you know, a light bulb went off. You know, my my mom used to wake us up as kids, like sh- like with a what I would now call a pre-event sports massage, right? So I always had a healthy touch experience in my life, right? So, um, and then just kind of this, you know, just something that just wasn't resonating with me. And then just kind of a clear distinction of this is resonating with me, Adrian, pay attention to that. And I remember while I was waiting for the thing that I had to run over to FedEx, I took a piece of paper and I wrote down all of the things that I disliked about the current job I was in. And I wrote the exact opposite of those things on the other side of the page. And they were pointing me into, you know, to this, this health and wellness way. Um, And I Google, I don't even think it was Google at the time. I think it was dog pile or something like that. Right. So, uh, you know, massage schools, New Jersey, because I was living in New Jersey at the time. And Somerset School of Massage Therapy uh, came up with an open house. And I said, I'll give it a shot, you know, but I, I have this really good job, air quotes, right, with paid time off, air quotes, and with, you know, uh, 401k match, air quotes, right? And why would you want to leave that job, you know, because, you know, and we all know why, right? You know, it's the quality of life was was really, really poor. Um, and went to the open house and I said, well, I'll do this on the nights and weekends. That's when everybody's available. Anyway, I'll do it on the side for extra income. And as I got deeper in massage school, I had said, I need to really focus my time on this. This is, um, sometimes I hate using that phrase. I was called to do this. It's hard to deny it. <laughs> it's hard if you to were deny called, it. You were called. Yes. Well, they were called. So when I was in massage school, one of my um, one of my fellow classmates um, got pregnant during our time, and um, she missed a bunch of classes uh, just you know from from her pregnancy. And she had asked me to walk her through some of the material that she had missed, and I got a rise out of that. You know, she understood it and she was able to assimilate it and that brought out that education piece like man i have a knack for this so so let me and so in the beginning of my career i actually learned a lot about how to teach because you know because i'm like oh i'm stepping into a classroom but i don't know the first thing about the lesson plan right <laughs> you know, so uh, a lot of my energy went into went into that piece right it went into you know how to build a lesson plan how to deliver it how to be engaging um the material, I just wanted to tell everybody about it. I'm like, isn't this neat that you have a femur and I have a femur and like, oh my God. And like, let's palpate the acromion processes. And isn't it cool? There's 20 people in this room and we have 20 different acromion processes, but they're all kind of the same. Um, so, so 
that piece, because I taught musculoskeletal anatomy and uh, kinesiology. So, th- so that piece just became really fascinating to see all of these similarities from person to person and all of these differences at the same time. Enough to know that we're one, but, you know, the differences to show all of our unique fingerprint. And, you know, I, I fell in love quick. I fell in love hard. I stayed in love the whole time. And I feel like I, I, I just, I feel like I'm in the beginning. I feel like there's so much to do and I can't wait to see what's going to happen. It's a great way to live. I love your life passion. I I can just feel it. I know our listeners can feel it just uh, listening to you here. Let me shift to your first relationship with the Massage Therapy Foundation when you began volunteering in 2010. What drew you to their work? And then can you walk us through the roles that you've had as a volunteer? I know I read them in the bio, but can you walk us through a little bit of that? So, So when I first learned about the Massage Therapy Foundation, I thought that they were this research organization, right? And I was I was super happy about that. Great. I'm glad that we're learning more about this stuff. Here's a couple of bucks, Massage Therapy Foundation. I am a clinician, you know, and you know, at the time, an educator too. So so I'm like, great, here, here's some money. Thank you. Um, and then I got a phone call from Tim Herbert of Books of Discovery. Um, he was chairing the community service grant review committee at the time. Um, so I had a relationship with Tim through the school because our school used books of discovery, um, in our book set. And, um, so, so I knew Tim and he had told me about this particular committee and I was like, oh, I didn't even know that committee existed. And, and I wanted to be more involved with the foundation, but I just didn't know how. So that invite onto the committee was my first volunteer step. I eventually became the chair of that. Um, that committee, and then the 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 chairs got to join the board of trustees on one call for uh, for the year. Just hey, here's what's going on with the committee, and then I got to hear all of the other committees. I'm like, man, this organization is awesome. We are doing some really cool and bold stuff, and it really helped me learn about you know the the rigor of a of a research process too, right? You know, and and really just understand the the uphill battle that our researchers have to have to do in order to get the information out to where we needed to get to in order to get it to a higher level, et cetera, et cetera. And then, and then I was, um, I was asked if I was interested in being on the board of trustees and that just sounded so lovely to me. Um, and I was fortunately elected. Um, and then the rest, the, the rest is history, right? Let's take a short break to hear a word from our sponsors. Anatomy Trains is delighted to invite you to our in-person fascial dissection workshop, October 10th through 14th, 2022. We're excited to be back in the lab with Anatomy Trains author Tom Myers and master dissector Todd Garcia in Todd's Laboratory of Anatomical Enlightenment in Boulder, Colorado. Join students from around the world and from all types of manual, movement, and fitness professions to explore the real human form, not the images you get from books. Visit anatomytrains.com for details. Hey, lifelong learners. Did you know that Elements Massage Studios are hiring and at the top of their list is curious massage therapists like you? Elements Massage Studios are all about improving the lives of everyone they touch. For them, that includes giving you training in new skills, a supportive team, and chances to grow a client list. If this sounds like it could be your new home, let them know we sent you by going to elementsmassage.com slash ABMP. That's elementsmassage.com slash ABMP. Let's get back to our conversation. Okay, Adrian, so we've talked about the different roles you've had in the Massage Therapy Foundation and your passion and love for massage and education. How does this new role of being the Massage Therapy Foundation president blend those passions together and talk to us a little bit more about the mission of MTF. And so listeners who may not be familiar, get a real sense of, of what you do and what that organization is all about. We're, we're inherently givers as massage therapists, right? So the thing that drew me to the foundation was that it's a philanthropic organization. Um, so, you know, funding research projects to talk about the efficacy and the mechanisms of, of massage therapy, how, how it works, how it doesn't work, 
Um, and, you know, just kind of keeping, keep asking that question. Um, we also support education by um, giving our, our schools and our teachers and our students resources um, to help with research literacy, to make it not this big, scary R word, you know, that, that uh, you know, as a, um, as a licensed uh, practice, we should really kind of stay current on, on what's happening and the community serve and funding community service projects. Um, so that's a that's a granting committee which we we give money to uh, nonprofit organizations that are um, that have projects that are serving underserved communities, whether it's illness, injury, distance to care, socioeconomic status. And we we've seen disaster recovery grant applications come through, which were timely and you know, from all over the world. And it's so heartwarming. And I, I keep telling everybody that they're going to have to pry that committee out of my cold, dead hands. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> it is, it is so heartwarming to be able to fund four or five, you know, uh, uh, grants, uh, community service grants per year. It is heartbreaking to say no to the other, you know, 65, um, you know, up to 65 that uh, we've seen in the past to say no. So the foundation was actually founded on community service. I wasn't aware of that until just a few years ago. Uh, Doug Nelson, who was two presidents ago, um, Doug Nelson had said that, you know, he did a little bit of history research and he said, yeah, that was that was the, the original intent. And that, you know, kind of perked me up because that, you know, that's what I'm most familiar with, with, with the foundation, right? So this year we're, we're starting an initiative, Bob King Community Service initiative. So for for the body workers who were influenced by Bob, we knew that his school, Chicago School Massage, um, they had community service embedded in their curriculum. The huge positive impact, not only on the people who are being served, but on the people who are serving and the people who are coordinating these projects. Um, so we want to help schools who either have some kind of community service outreach project already or help schools who want to do something like this as part of their clinic hours, either internship or externship. So we're going to have some, we're going to have a couple of grants that are specific to schools to fund community service projects for their clinics. And I'm super stoked about that. Bob King was such a huge influencer of mine. I had the privilege of, of uh, assisting him in a couple of different seminars, CEU seminars that he taught. And I I wept when he passed away, right? And, and this feels like this legacy program. This is going to be a legacy program, and I'm hoping it's going to be ongoing. That's my my goal is to set it up so that it is, because I think it's really at the heart of what we do is just this this really this place of service is really it's always been important to me, and I think it's time to shine a light on it. Yeah, I want to double down on that a little bit uh, because, you know, I had to turn on my little uh, journalistic radar and dive into some blog posts that you'd made. So <laughs> I actually looked back into uh, 2018 where you wrote uh, a blog called A Few Words About uh, My Support for the Massage Therapy Foundation. And you really hit home that point, which is you thought that it was just uh, a research endeavor and that you just wanted to make sure. And I want to reiterate that here to the listeners, that it's so much more than that. It's that. And so much more than that. And just how powerful that is and how that really triggered you and your involvement and your passion there. Yeah. For, yes, absolutely. And it's it's so easy to give. We have really creative ways of doing it, right? And and really just give me a call and I will I'll tell you what I do, you know, with my practice. And and we, you know, we can get in touch with anybody that, you know, any, any board member, any, anybody on staff, and, and we'll be able to help guide you to, you know, pocket change, you know, to, to uh, help, help support it where it won't even feel like anything. When I worked in Manhattan, and I, I will never forget this for my entire life. When I worked in Manhattan, I, I took the train in and up to, into Penn Station at the top of the steps before you got out onto the street, there was a gentleman there. And he was collecting for the homeless. That was the, the project. It was a nonprofit organization. He had a big five-gallon bucket. And um, he would say, one penny, one penny, one penny from your lunch change, one penny from your shopping change. Well, two million people come out of those stairs at Penn Station every morning. You know, one penny, 
times 2 million, we got a good chunk of change that's going to help a lot of people. Um, so I'm, I'm looking to try to show people like there's these micro donations that we can do that really can help move the needle. Okay, so I know I've served as a president on a couple boards, uh, not affiliated with the massage area, but in the in the publishing area. But I know new presidents usually have an agenda or things to accomplish during their term. What are your plans during your term for the Massage Therapy Foundation? The Bob King Initiative was um, something that came came to us as an idea, and I said we need to prioritize this, right? So um, that's we got that in motion, right? So. Um, I also would love to put a call back out again for the uh, practitioner case report. We used to have a contest a while ago um, in, to, in order to encourage people to do it. Um, part of the reason is self-serving. I want to do one. Right? So I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to do one myself. And, and you know, I kind of took this concept of, you know, $1, like my blog had said, right? If every, if every massage therapist in the country gave a dollar, we have $350,000, right? So, and that, and that can fund a lot, right? So if every massage therapist in the country did one case report, just one, the amount of information that we have to do higher level research is, we're unstoppable then. Not everybody's going to do it. However, when we think about one, one client. Tell me about that one client. I want everybody who's listening to this podcast to send me an email or or get in touch with me in some way and, and tell me about that one client. And that's the client I want you to do a case report on because you love, we love our clients. We love them. Tell me about them. Tell me that love story. So I want to hear how you have helped this one human, one therapist, one client, a series of of massages and then tell us about it. We have a nice form. We have a free ebook that um, shows you how to write a case report. So we have all of the tools. We just need to do it. We can do it. I know we can. I love it. And I love uh, that you have that tool for people because I think they hear case report and they're like, well, I can't be in charge of a whole research study, but it's not that it's doable. And I love that you have resources to walk everyone through the process and give examples. So then it becomes much more attainable and something that they might be really excited about doing versus intimidated, right? And then if you get stuck on one part, you can call us up like, hey, I'm really having trouble with this lit review. And then we can, you know, we can direct you to the right person who can help you with that. Which brings me to the practice based reach research network. Okay. So the PBRN is something that the foundation has been, you know, kind of trying to trying to start and trying to start. And we're really have good momentum for the PBRN. So here is a, a point. And again, you know, kind of reflecting on my original relationship with the foundation, I would have never put myself in a research space. And I'm like, I don't know how to get there. I don't know what to do. I don't know what I can offer. And the PBRN eliminates all of that should somebody have similar feelings, right? So we show up, we tell people what's happening in our treatment room, and then somebody with the research expertise can, can translate that. So the, the case report is really big for that. And the PBRN gives us an opportunity to wear our clinician's hat and maybe our educator's hat and still be a part of that research process, right? So, so it's not all. Um, I had a I had a mentor real early in my career, and she she used to say, you know, research isn't just you know lab coats and Bunsen burners, um, and that got, that kind of stuck with me too. I was like, oh yeah, like there's a lot of there's a a lot of ways to to collect data and to to tell our story. So so telling our story, our mentors and predecessors, right, Kristen. They told their story by making textbooks and making ebooks, and and that's how they contributed to the story of massage. Here's our turn, our turn to write the next story, the next love story, right? Our love story, the clients that you love, you're, we're going to tell everybody about it through the case report. So, um, so I want to make sure that happens too. Um, we also have uh, Marshall Denicky, who uh, we know through the industry. Um, uh, unfortunately, Marshall lost his daughter to breast cancer, um, and as part of his uh, as part of his grief process, he offered uh, he qualified for the Boston Marathon, and he offered to raise funds 
uh, for the Massage Therapy Foundation with the with a portion of those funds going specifically to uh, community service grants serving women who are going through uh, and men who are going through breast cancer treatment and their caregivers as well. Um, so I'm I'm grateful to Marshall and and I'm I'm um, at a loss for words by the way that he rose to, uh, you know, kind of do something with, with his, uh, with his grief. And I am absolutely humbled that he chose the Massage Therapy Foundation as, as the benefactor of that work. So, so we should be seeing more community service grants funded through that as well. That's really exciting. You know, we're all excited to, to gather again. And I think we'll feel the momentum of wanting to take the next step. And it's, it's got to be work, right? So I'm here to remind everyone that the work is joyful and let's keep going. And if we're having a hard time, we're here as a community to, to, to push that forward, right? So I would also love to see some collaboration with um, allied professions. I'm personally trying to make an, an effort to reach out to uh, the American Physical Therapy Association Foundation and, you know, other, you know, acupuncture foundations maybe and, and maybe some things that we're not even thinking of. It's it's a little bit farther down because of the Bob King Initiative and, and uh, the Jacqueline Project that Marshall's doing, uh, the PBRN. However, um, you know, I'm hoping the board will reelect me. <laughs> I don't see why they wouldn't. And, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to collaboration and community. Those are my two words uh, for, for presidency. I think we are in a space where we can lift each other up and love can win. And massage is, is an avenue to do that. I want to thank our guest today, Adrienne Asta. For more information about the work she's doing with the Massage Therapy Foundation, visit massagetherapyfoundation.org. Thanks, Adrienne, and thanks, Kristen. Thank you. Thank you, Adrienne, so much for being with us today. We love hearing your passion and everything that you're doing for the Massage Therapy Foundation and our profession. Thank you so much. Members are loving ABMP 5-Minute Muscles and ABMP Pocket Pathology, two quick reference web apps included with ABMP membership. ABMP 5-Minute Muscles delivers muscle-specific palpation and technique videos, plus origins, insertions, and actions for the 83 muscles most commonly addressed by body workers. ABMP Pocket Pathology, created in conjunction with Ruth Werner, puts key information for nearly 200 common pathologies at your fingertips and provides the knowledge you need to help you make informed treatment decisions. Start learning today. ABMP members log in at abmp.com and look for the links in the featured benefits section of your member homepage. Not a member? Learn about these exciting member benefits at abmp.com more.